Good afternoon. I have a very good question this week from my friend Chantal who writes, you know how your best friends and family are always your cheerleaders and think everything you write is great? They tend not to find any logic flaws, plot holes, etc. So how do you choose your test readers? I am going to give you a brief history of my my, uh, my critique partnerships um, and how they've evolved over time. And then I'm going to give you some, some tips and pointers through the lens of like, what would I do now if I were just starting out and trying to become you know, part of a community? One new writing friend, one kindred spirit at a time. So I started writing seriously in college. Uh, I started working on my practice novel and I shared my early writing with a couple of my besties at NYU and one of them, um, I, I, I shared, a, this is one of my best friends at the time, I shared a short story with him and um, he was sort of like like positive but lukewarm um, because I think he was too um, he didn't he didn't want to he didn't want to hurt my feelings um, but I was just starting and the short story was not any good and that's fine um, my other friend Aravinda is one of the most candid people I have ever met which is something that you want to look for in a critique partner. Um, so she said to me, so she read a few um, chapters of my practice novel and she said, this is good and you can do better. So this is what we're looking for. We are looking for a beta reader, a critique partner, um, a friend who is going to give you that gift of candor, right? And you will reciprocate. So after college, um, Aravinda was still reading my work and I also, I wanted to, I wanted, I wanted writer friends though, because Aravinda didn't necessarily, she was a, she's a voracious reader, but she doesn't necessarily have any ambitions to write a novel of her own. So I wanted to find other writers. So I went on Craigslist because this was our only option back then. This was like 2002, 2003, 2004. Yeah, 2002, 2003. And so I ended up going on what amounted to these platonic first dates, basically, with um, people who, and I can't remember, I think I answered other people's ads. I don't know that I ever posted one of my own. But I would go for a drink, uh, go for dinner um, with someone I had been exchanging emails with. And for the most part, I mean, it, there was one connection that, um, I ended up staying in touch with the person, but we didn't really share any more work after that. So those were my, were my early attempts at finding a writing community. Uh, the easiest way that I found to connect, to find kindred spirits was in my MA program. Now I know not everyone is interested in getting a master's. I don't necessarily recommend it, especially if you wanna do a program where you'll be going into a significant amount of debt. So I'm just gonna tell you what my path was and what I would suggest for someone who is not going the MFA route. I did my program in Ireland, so it was called an MA, but it was essentially a one-year MFA program. So workshopping, <laughs> workshopping with folks who are not, whose work uh, is, is not in the same universe as yours, is not a good use of your time except for you know that maybe what that one other person in the class who is also writing you know um whatever it is you know you're both writing high fantasy novels and everyone else in the class is doing um you know hoity-toity literary fiction and they're hoping to you know published in the New Yorker or whatever it is. Um, the workshopping in my MA was only useful to me because I was able to connect with two writers 
and two, 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 two of the dearest people in the world to me, you know, 17 years later, uh, my friends Shannon and Alva, they, we, we both, we figured, we all, we figured out early on that we were kindred spirits and um, we could get like really, really enthusiastic about each other's work. And so th those, the friendships have stayed super strong. The, the beta readership has evolved over time because my, my friend Shannon um, has since gone back and become a counselor. Um, he is a social worker and he has very little time, very little free time these days. And so uh, he can read like smaller chunks, which is fine, but I've, I've told him whatever I send you, don't, if you, if you don't get a chance to read it, don't worry about it because I would much rather see you working on your own, your own plays, your own novel than to just getting, getting distracted by this jackhammer and trying to decide if I should close the window or not. I think we'll leave it open. So yeah, so, so there will be that, that maybe there may be that evolution over time where you know, you go through a period where you're sharing all of your work and, uh, you know, sending each other, you know, long emails or having long Skype or Zoom calls um, and going over your notes and, you know, having that really excited, um, you know, feeling of communion um, and that reciprocity, the reciprocal excitement. Um, but it's okay that, it, you know, if, something, you know, circumstances change, you have less bandwidth than you used to, you know, you have to say, I'm sorry, but I can't read your novel anytime soon. That's totally fine. Um, so I made some, let me look at my notes. So outside of the masters, um, I have, I have a couple of, I have a couple other friends I've made over the years who I would absolutely trust with any, um, you know, second drafts. Um, that I would want to share. Um, these are writers I've m met through professional networks. So they're like, you know, post book deal, you know, I'm an author now and I'm connecting with other colleagues. Um, so, you know, that, that is, it is a little bit easier um, because you can actually order someone's book and read it and then you can decide you know if you have a budding friendship you can um if you loved someone's work then you just um your friendship develops and and then naturally you know people over time will start asking what are you working on now and you know i'd, I'd love to read it if you um need a need a critique partner and so it happens organically over time um the other thing that i wanted to share with you the other experience I've had much more recently. This was back in, um, at the end of the summer, my friend Heather Demetrius, um, created this. She got this amazing group of writers together. Um, so I have to make sure that I, I give all the shout outs and I don't miss anyone. Um, so it was Margaret and Ingrid and Michelle and Frankie. Did I get everybody? Um, that, so, so we had a short lived critique group. So there were six of us. And we were all working on such different, such different works of fiction. But we, because because we were all Heather's friends in different different circles, um, she had a sense of how well we would we would fit together as a group, and we and we all we all got along so well, and um, that was an amazing critique of um, the first 15 pages of my time travel novel. It, it was just these five brilliant women asking brilliant questions. And I just, I just want to emphasize, you know, how, how powerful that can be if you um, find that you, you have a network over time and you know, you have that intuition that, you know, this writer friend um, would get along so well and would love to read the work of this writer friend. Um, and you can bring people together and make matches of um, beta readers and 
And that can be such a powerful catalyst. I, I came out of that critique feeling so inspired. It was just, it was, it was fantastic. So that, that's something that, I mean, if you're, if you're interested in putting together a group like that, and the only reason that we disbanded, well, I think it wasn't because we didn't love each other's work and, and appreciate each other's work and we weren't getting enough out of it. It was just, just, um, I think it was a, a bandwidth issue for one person. Uh, the format just wasn't quite working for another person. And, um, and so it, you know, I think we came together for the amount of time that we needed to come together. Um, and you know, who knows, I may be um, trading chapters with um, some of those writers later on, we shall see. Um, so moving on now, what I would do, what, what I would do now if I were just starting out, um, because you're, you're not gonna be taking an in-person workshop right now, right? And we, we have different feelings about social media, you know, and, and I know that it can be really anxiety making to put, feel like you're putting your heart out there in a, on a, in a tweet or an Instagram post saying, you know, hey everyone, this is what I'm working on and would anyone be interested in having a chat and maybe somewhere along the line maybe we could trade chapters and see see how it goes um i would do that if i were if i were looking for beta readers right now i think it helps if you if you start as friends and don't put the the pressure of you know will you make this commitment because it is a commitment and even if you're even if you're only reading 15 pages it, it is a commitment because you're asking someone to give you candid feedback and for some people like my friend Aravinda no problem she will be totally candid with someone she has just met and that is like the ultimate show of respect for someone because you are trusting that that person can handle your candor and you're you know you're you're implying that you, you know I trust that you have you know, emotional intelligence, that you are mature enough, that you can handle this and not see it as, um, you know, that I'm, I'm attacking you because I told you that, you know, you said she saw, you wrote she sighed five times in the span of five pages or whatever it is. Um, so the other thing, um, in addition to, you know, just getting more active on social media and seeing, because if you, if you, if you put the signal out, People will respond over time. I mean, it might take a while, but you know, that's patience. You gotta be patient about it because um, you you know your your perfect critique partner is not gonna fall in your lap right away. Um, workshopping um, or taking a class with a teacher you kn it, it, who has a very distinct sensibility. Um, so I have taken a couple classes with my friend Henry Leanne. He teaches amazing classes. The one that, that I took most recently was with writing through writing, writing the other. And you know, so you're gonna find people in through organizations like writing the other who are who whose values and whose vision is very much aligned with your own. So, you know, and someone like, someone like my friend Heather um, teaches workshops, um, Nova Rensuma, I don't know, I, mean, I, think, I think Nova will be teaching online again in the near future, um, but these are really like big hearted writers who attract big hearted writers into their workshop, workshopping groups and um, into their seminars. So those would be my two biggest tips for finding a beta reader at this point in time um, still living in a COVID world um, and then so the last thing that I would point out is when we are asking a friend whether or not they're well probably they're not a writer um, if you're in this situation that that Chantal is talking about where you say you know your sister's a voracious reader and you have her read you know a few chapters of your of your book you can say to her do you feel comfortable being frank with your with your feedback because you're not going to hurt my feelings 
I love that you cheerlead for me. I really appreciate that. And it's not helpful for me at this point in my development. I need you to tell me what's not working for you. And that will help me to write a stronger subsequent draft. So that's the last thing that I would suggest is if you do have someone who is enthusiastic about reading your work, someone, someone who reads enough to know what good fiction is, um, just, just ask them if they might, if they feel comfortable being more candid with you because they might, they might absolutely rise to, you know, to that expectation or to that, you know, you can, you can clarify that expectation and, um, and they, they might give you exactly the feedback that you're looking for. They just weren't sure that you wanted them to be candid. So I just make sure that I, that I wrote, that I, I've covered everything. I think that's everything. If you are watching this and you would love to meet, make a new, make a new writing friend and eventually a beta partner, I mean, have a critique partner or a beta reader, why don't you drop a heart at the, um, in the comments and that'll give anyone else watching and looking at the comments a chance to check out your, your profile and, and your, your page and, you know, any, any writing related captions that you may have written. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe we can make some friends this way. Um, other times I've, I've invited people to do this. Um, and I, I, I see now that my friend, I have friends who are following each other, who, um, I know from different sectors of life, which is really cool. Um, so why don't you do that? Drop a heart, one heart of any of the color of your choice um, in the comments and as an invitation to let some, some other writers uh, checking out this post um, to check you out. So let's see how that goes. That'll be a fun experiment. So if you have any questions about anything else that I can answer in a future episode, Friday, Friday, fr usually Friday morning office hours, drop me a DM or you can leave a comment below. Uh, if you have any, any other suggestions for um, authors who are teaching wonderful online workshops who um, you would recommend, also leave that in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next Friday.